Hello, today I'm continuing my pirate series. This is gonna be kind of all over the place and hopefully it'll make a coherent outfit eventually. Um, but today I'm gonna be starting on the previously promised leatherworking and I'm very excited to get started with this. I've also decided that uh, it's a lot more hassle to wear the like fake tooth thing. So I'm just gonna not, so it's a lot more comfortable not to. Um, so you'll be seeing a little bit of my lack of tooth here, but uh, it'll be fixed eventually so be nice about it please <laughs> for these cuffs um my original thought was to do bracers but then i thought about it some more and i don't really see a pirate wearing bracers i do want to make some bracers in the future so i think i'll make those in the next few weeks i don't know if the video will be up for a little while because I got a lot of stuff planned but I am just gonna be making cups for this I am gonna be doing some tooling on these so I'm just gonna be taking the stamps and going tap 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 a bunch uh, so you'll see that and uh, yeah that's that's about it I'm gonna be also trying out some different leather dye than I did last year if you saw my leather working video from last year I made a belt for my Halloween witch costume I used EcoFlow water stain for that I've got two different dyes this time I'm gonna be using another EcoFlow product and then I'm also gonna be trying Phoebe's dye out as well um, I got different colors so I will not really be able to like color match or like color compare these however I'm gonna see how they do in terms of like what the color is, like the evenness, like if they last pretty well. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I think we got a pattern first. <laughs> I've talked about before how I make a pattern to like fit my arm because it's very, very simple. Uh, that was, I think in my Renaissance Fairy series. So I'll link that, but basically you just want to take the measurement of like your wrist circumference and then like wherever you want it to stop that circumference and then measure between the two points. So I'm going to do that really quick. My wrist circumference should be about like a little less than six inches. And then my arm circumference, I want it to only be about like three inches long. Uh, and normally you should not be measuring over a watch, but uh, it's fine. I, it'll be fine. Doesn't need to be super precise. So about three inches up, it is like six and a quarter, maybe six and a half. So the leather that I have is pretty thick. I got the six to seven ounce leather, I think. So it's gonna be kind of stiff going around my arm. Hopefully it'll like wear and break in as I wear it more. But uh, I think that I wanna leave a little bit of a gap so it's not just like fully encircling my wrists. I think I'm gonna do five and a half inches at the wrist and then six and a half at the top end and then it'll be like three inches in length. So I'm just gonna draw that out. Five and a half, so that's two and three quarters, I think. You don't want these to meet at this kind of angle. You want it to meet at a right angle. I'm just going to curve that up so that it's more like that. And that's the basic pattern. This will also get some grommets in it. So I'll put those in, let's see, maybe three eighths of an inch back and then every three quarters of an inch. Perfect. I haven't decided on an actual design yet, but I'm just gonna cut this for now and then I'll think about the design afterwards. I think in the future I want to try doing one with buckles, but for now I'm going to keep it simple since this is my first attempt at making uh, any kind of like bracer or cuff or anything. So we're just going to go with grommets because I know how to do that and it's simple and I don't have to buy any more material for it. So that is the cuff number one. I want to make another cuff that's more of a point. So pretty much I'll just trace this. I think that's the easiest way to do it. the top there to where that point will go so I'll just match that up to there and then because this is like now a decorative feature it doesn't need to be a right angle at that corner and there we go that's the other pattern <laughs> super simple Now, to trace these out of leather, I, I don't know if this is 100% the correct way to do it, but this is what I'm gonna do. 
I'm just gonna lay this on my leather case here and I'm gonna figure out which one matches. It's kind of wavy, but I think that I can get that to all flatten out with like water and heat and everything. So I'm not too concerned. Um, I think that that will fit like that, great. And I've got a cutting surface underneath here and I'm just gonna cut it with a box cutter. If this does not become unwavy, that's okay. This is going to be kind of like a practice run of leather working and I will only get better the more that I do things with. the holes punched, I've gotten the edges beveled and skived and uh, slicked and all of that and I did a little groove around the edge. It's all ready for me to do some swivel knifing and carving so I'm very excited. I've made up these two designs for my cuffs. I found a picture of an octopus on the internet and this seems to be what everybody uses for their leather carving and their belt buckles and everything. I made a couple of changes so it is a little bit different but um, you know whatever that's what we're going to be doing. And then I did, um, who is this? This is Calico Jack's flag motif. So I've been watching Black Sails lately and uh, I really like Calico Jack even though he has not been revealed as Calico Jack yet. Um, so I decided to do a little reference to him in this. I am a little bit unsure if all those little tiny teeth are gonna go well in this, but we're gonna try, so mm, whatever. I have a ton of spare plastic bags. A lot of my supplies get shipped in plastic bags, so I'm just gonna stick the decal in here so he doesn't get wet and disintegrate. I've also got a sponge and some water so that I can do it really evenly. Um, but either way works. The sponge and water is just a little bit less messy. <laughs> Transfer to design, I could use an awl, but I'm gonna use a mechanical pencil and just use it without the lead out, but it'll just give me a good impression without like cutting through the plastic. He's a little sloppy looking, but he'll be fine once I get it actually swivel knifed on there. belts drying here. These will be coming in a later video. I've been doing some experiments on them so that I can do my cuffs really nicely and I'll go over all of the uh, like results of my experiments 
later in the actual belt video. But for now, I am going to be painting my two cuffs. I've got them all tooled and they are dry now. So, oops, I just got dye on my finger. That's not great, it's fine. But they're all dry so I can start prepping them for paint. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to coat them with Neat's Foot Oil, let that dry for a little bit, and then I can put the dye on them. So the Neat's Foot Oil helps the dye to absorb a little bit more evenly so it's not as splotchy. I will be talking more about that in the next video. Just to make sure I'm doing everything the right way, I thought I would explain it in this video since this is coming first. This is what they look like after they've been coated. Just looks wet again. I'll just let that dry for a couple hours before it's ready to paint. All right, I've still got all of my belts set up. So these are in a little corner, but I'm going to be staining Let's see, I'm gonna be doing the Calico Jack one with the Phoebings in the really dark one, and then I'm gonna be doing the Octopus in EcoFlow Water Stain. So let's do the Water Stain first, I think, um, and then I'll do the Calico Jack one. I don't think I'm gonna need much, so I'm just gonna do like two teaspoons of the Water Stain and two teaspoons of water. Also, I gotta say, like, the Phoebe's dye might be better as dye, like it might be a better dye, sure, but the container the water stain comes in is much less messy than the Phoebe's container. Like this has just, oh, yeah. This has just gotten everywhere and it's a complete mess. Okay, well, I'm gonna do a couple coats on that. So while that dries, I'm gonna do the darker one one I want to be extra careful with, but I'm just going to do it on a dauber so that it doesn't spill everywhere. The Phoebe's also dries a lot faster, I think because it's alcohol-based rather than water-based, but it dries so quickly. how these cuffs turned out. I think they're really cute and I, I really am, uh, I really like the carvings that I did on them and I think they're both a really cool color. I am happy with how they look. Um, generally, I think this went pretty smoothly. It was just like 
the standard steps of leather working so like making a pattern cutting stuff out doing all of the like prep stuff of cutting the holes and slicking the edges all that everything went very smoothly um the leather carving itself was a little bit less smooth because i'm a little rusty after not doing it for a year but I think it turned out pretty well. Um, I think maybe if I had gone a little bit slower then the designs would have turned out smoother but I was a little bit on a time crunch. I really wanted to get this done to go to the PA Run Fair and be ready for Pirates Day. This is my first time going to the PA Run Fair and it was so much fun. I had a really great time. It's a little bit different from the Maryland Run Fair. They had a mermaid so that was really cool. I'm going to be doing a vlog that includes the PA Run Fair later so you'll see more about that in the future. But um, about these cuffs generally, I think they turned out really well. I'm very happy with them and I think they're really cute. I'm glad that I put them on elastic as well. Um, um, so like for the lace up I just did elastic instead of doing like a leather cord so that I didn't have to retie it every single time so now I can just kind of slide my hand in and it expands and contracts because that's what elastic does and I think that it's a lot more convenient than having to tie it every time um, I don't think it looks too different either like obviously if you look straight at it it's elastic like it looks like elastic but I think that from a glance or like from a distance you can't really tell at all that it's not like a leather cord or something so happy about that. I did decide not to do the grommets uh, towards the end of my making process. I was going to put grommets in it and then I decided kind of last minute that I didn't want to do grommets. I liked how it looked when it was a little bit more, I don't know, like I feel like the grommets would have looked a little too modern or like too polished so I left them just as the holes and I think that it's fine. Like this is not like fabric where if you punch a hole in it it's going to fray out. This is leather and it's sturdy and it's pretty thick leather at that so um, I think that just doing the holes and not doing actual metal grommets in it was totally fine so yay for that. The dies i think both look really nice like they're both really beautiful dies however um the feebings is not very color fast as i was wearing it it leaked on my arm uh so when i left the renaissance festival that day i had a little bit of a uh, like red cast brown dye on my arm. It wiped off pretty easily so it didn't like stain it at all. It was not there the next day. I was really worried about that actually because it's leather dye, like leather is skin. So it's dye meant for skin basically. So I was concerned that this was going to be stuck on my arm for a while but it wasn't and it was fine. Um, it just kind of wiped off. EcoFlow is actually the one that I expected was going to leak a little bit and it didn't. It was totally fine. Um, I did have it over my Fitbit so it didn't have as much contact with my skin but it didn't transfer dye to the Fitbit. It didn't transfer dye to the parts of the skin that was touching. So the Feebings dye actually transferred more dye. I didn't use the Pro dye. I've heard that the Pro dye is really good and it never transfers dye. Mm we'll see about that claim in the future when I try that dye. Um, I meant to grab the pro dye and I just grabbed the wrong one. So, oh well. Um, but other than that, I think they look really cute and they worked out really well. And I'm hoping that the more that I wear these cuffs, the less it'll transfer dye because it'll start absorbing my oils and sweat and that'll create like a coating barrier. Generally, I think it's a really good little project. Um, I think that this was actually a better project for a beginner than my original belt project from last year. If you're into leather working, then you should try this project because it was a lot smaller. <laughs> That's all I got. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps out me and my channel. And if you want to see future videos, then please subscribe. Oh, I did this in the wrong order. Um, if you had any questions, comments, concerns, if there's something that I could have done better to prevent the dye from leaking or like if you had any tips for other leather working stuff, um, I am a beginner to all of this so I do appreciate any tips and tricks and all of that stuff. Um, yeah, that's, that's it. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!